Hello, hello, grade fives and sixes. It is me, Lance Cardinal, back once again for another art adventure episode. And I'm so excited to be here with you again because it's a beautiful day. And why not? So cool. It is so nice to see you. And hey, check it out. My backdrop is all done. Hello, what do you think? Oh my goodness, I just love it. It's so bright and colorful and way better than the brown wall you saw last time. But you know, I think it turned out pretty good. I got uh, teepees and sunshines and rainbows and all sorts of cool stuff that I love. And even the fact that every single teepee in this mural is a different color, but together they form one united village of people and that's how we should live our lives together never judging each other for how different we are always thinking of us as a team especially in the school in your classroom taking care of each other is so so important and of course in the middle of the mural right down here is a heart with my initial my uh, pre name Wachusk in syllabics right in the middle of that because all my love goes out to you guys every time we do these things. So now you know what these uh, murals are all about. So, so happy you guys are following that. There it is. Hope you like it. So, so cool. But what we always do when we see each other every time, we know what we do. We say hello in Cree, and everyone knows how to do that. It is Tanse. That's right. Saying hello in Cree is Tanse. And we always say that every time we see each other. So on a count of three, if you want, I want you to say the word Tanse with me. Piak, Niso, Nisto, Tanse. Yes. Good job, you guys. You did so, so well. But you're the older kids. You know all this kind of stuff already. So it's super, super important. Um, so yeah. But before we get to our Cree word of the day and our really cool painting project today, I want to show you something so cool. These are my makalaks that I got. I absolutely love these things. The best part about them, I think, are these beautiful vamps right down here. So, so cool. And they're very tall. They have a red fox fur on the top and some beautiful Pendleton fabric. And then the colors on the bottom. I absolutely love my makalaks and I wear them all the time when I'm walking around uh, in the winter time and it's cold and I'm having a nice event and I want to represent myself as an indigenous person, I always wear these because representing ourselves as indigenous people is very important. Being proud of who we are, where we come from is very important. So I hope you do that as well. And that brings us to today's Cree word of the day, which is moose hide moccasins. And the Cree word for that is Pahkigin Wixxina. That's right, Pahkigin Wixxina, which means moose hide moccasins. And that's today's Cree word. So on the count of three, I want you guys to try it out as well to say that Cree word with me. On the count of three, one, two, three. Pahkigin Wixxina. That's right, good job you guys, you did your best, and that's all that matters, it's a pretty hard word today, but it's super, super cool. Alright you guys, so now we're going to get to today's amazing art project. This is going to be so much fun you guys, we're going to do some painting today and make something so cool. It is a little moccasin paperweight made out of a rock, isn't that the coolest? Check it out, I'll put it down here in my zoom cam, you can see it right there, so, so cool. It's made from a rock that I found outside, painted it, and added a little bit of fluff on it, and now I can use it as a paperweight on my desk, give it to someone I love as a gift, and that's what we're gonna be doing today, so I hope you're ready for it, it's gonna be fun. So the first thing you probably did was that we'll get our supplies together. Now, um, supplies we're gonna need are, Rocks! <laughs> the first thing we're gonna need is rocks, and I'm sure your teacher has taken you out for a walk, but if you haven't gone outside and gotten your rocks yet, I suggest you pause that video, go get those rocks, wash them all off, get them nice and clean and dry, and then come on back to the video. If you've already gathered your rocks, let's keep going. So you wanna pick a rock that's sort of medium shaped and has a foot shape already. This one's pretty cool, kinda of shaped like a foot already. And this one's not too bad. A little bit square, but it'll work. 
This is a big moccasin. Wow, so big. And this one, not too bad. But I think today, I'm gonna go with this one. Nice size, put these rocks aside for now. <laughs> okay, next on our supply list is gonna be all of our paint. Now I hope you already have all your painting clothes on because you're gonna get messy and you don't wanna get any paint on your shirt. If not, roll up your sleeves as high as you can. You don't wanna get any paint on your sleeves of your shirt and wanna make sure and stay clean, okay? So we have our rock and our paint. We're gonna need six colors today. We're gonna need moosehide yellow, white, Alberta rose pink, yellow, black, and green. Those are the colors we're gonna need. And teachers, um, I'm sure you can get little disposable containers, pre-mix these ahead of time, and give them to the kids so they have their own containers, they don't have to share, and they will be disposed of right afterwards. All right? We're also gonna need some paint brushes, as you can see here, two different sizes. A little tiny one for doing all the detail work on the front, and also a nice fat one to do all the coloring of the moose hide as well. We're also gonna need Oh yes, paper towels. These are very, very important. Um, these are to keep ourselves clean when we are, are working, so that's good right there. We're also gonna need water. Each station, each kid should have their own water ready to go, just like that. I'm gonna put my water right here. I'm gonna put my paints down right here. work with this piece of paper. You can put a piece of paper down on your desk, uh, 11 by 17 size, or you could also put down a uh, uh, paper towel uh, to keep your station clean, but I like to put paper towel down right where my water is, because when I rinse my brush, I can dry it off and place it right there. Perfect. Now back here, we'll put our rock sample right here. Maybe right here. All right, and last but not least, we're gonna need is some fur for the top of our rock. You can see right here, I have white fur, but you can also use any kind of fur you have at the school. Maybe you have some uh, different colored rabbit fur or beaver or whatever you have, you can use it. You can also use yarn or you can use uh, cotton balls and stretch them out, make them fluffy. Whatever you got there, make it work, but we'll need this as well. And because of that, we're gonna need a glue gun today. Um, I'm always going to have a glue gun today is because um, it's easier than using um, a regular glue. It'll stick much better. But if you have only regular glue, that's okay. It'll still work. You just got to let it dry a little bit longer before you handle it, okay? All right, so because we're painting today, we're going to take some time in between to do a little bit of dry time. And during that dry time, I'm going to show you some really cool videos of some fun stuff I've done around Edmonton and some really great artists while the paint is drying. So it's going to be cool, all right? I think we have everything we need now. We're all ready to go. So let's begin our project now. Now, the first step, of course, is to clean your rock. If you haven't done that already, get out there, wash it, make sure it's dry and ready to go. So first step we're going to do is take our moose hide color paint and paint the entire rock moose hide. Now, if your rock is flat, like this one, don't paint the bottom, don't worry about the bottom. Just paint where you can see it. My rock is a little bit different. It kind of has a rounded bottom, so I'm gonna paint the whole thing. Now just go ahead and use your paint. Paint it right on top there. Easy as pie. Now, teachers, you're probably gonna have to pre-mix the moose hide color. Uh, it won't be available uh, anywhere in the stores. But if you find something similar, like a tan or a beige, you can always add a little bit of yellow to make that work. Now, a little trick as well for drying stuff. I always use a hair dryer, just like this one, to dry my stuff off. And um, it just makes things go a little bit faster. <laughs> um, so I know you're not gonna have enough hair dryers at the school, so we're gonna take the time to uh, let it air dry. Okay, so I find a way to paint my entire rock. Don't worry about getting our fingers dirty. We can always rinse them off in the water, use our paper towel to clean off our fingers. There's lots of ways to stay clean. But getting painty messy is kind of fun. 
All right, that is all painted, and I love the way my rock looks. I'm so happy with it. We put our brush in. Every time we're done with a color, we don't leave the paint on the brush. These are acrylic paints. They, they dry to a rubber, so that's why we don't get it on our clothes, and we don't leave it on the brush, or it's ruined forever. So, we get our brush, we get it nice and cleaned off, and the reason we have paper towel is that we rub our brushes in the water until it comes off clean on the paper towel and we know that we have cleaned our brush off enough. There we go, that brush is all clean. Okay, so we're gonna let this rock dry, but meantime, I wanna show you guys a really cool video. I recently took a hot air balloon ride all the way over the city of Edmonton. I gotta share it with you right now, so enjoy that video while our paint, our moose hide paint dries, and I'll see you guys real soon. This is it, it is 5.30 in the morning. I'm heading out right now to the location for my hot air balloon ride. It's gonna be so much fun. I can't wait to show you guys everything, so I'll see you there.
All right, everyone, welcome back. Wasn't that the coolest? Let me tell you, if you have a chance to take a hot air balloon ride, do it. It was so much fun and the views were incredible and not even that scary. So give it a shot. Take an adventure once in a while. Be brave. Do something you've never done before, especially because you're older kids now. It's time to start doing amazing adventures. Whatever you can do, tell your mom and dad you want to go on a hot air balloon ride in Edmonton. I'm sure they'll take you. <laughs> All right, the next step for our amazing um, moccasin paperweight is our black and white. Now the first thing we're going to do is take our brush and we're going to do the black part of our vamp, which is right uh, the hole of the moccasin right up there. So we take some of our black. Now don't go too big. It's better to go smaller and get bigger as we go and paint where you would think that hole would be. Now I'm just gonna sort of guesstimate. You can also use a marker and draw where you wanna go, but you know what? Sometimes you gotta just go for it, and figure it out. There we go, I'm pretty happy with that. See, there's my hole, looks pretty good. I'm sure you can see that in the little close-up cam we have going there in our close-up video camera, which is great. Now we rinse off this brush all the way. So we're gonna use white next and it cannot have any white on it at all. All right, so now our brush is nice and clean. It's time to make the vamp part of our moccasin. Now the vamp, as you know, is the front part of the moccasin right here. That's what the vamp is. We're gonna create that now with white. We'll take some of our white paint Put it right on the front here. Oh, <laughs> I blobbed, I blobbed on it. Thankfully, it's kind of in the right area, so not too big of a deal. But like I was saying, mistakes happen. You just gotta go with it, right? So we start painting our vamp right on the front in a nice round way. Oh, I'm getting paint all over my moccasin. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of repair work after this. So do a little white vamp. Don't worry about it touching right to the black. You want to mix the black with the white like I just did. So this can be a little bit more difficult, but take your time. Make sure it's round, the shape of a vamp. Just like that. Ah, it looks so cool. Now, I made a couple little mistakes. I'm gonna go back with my yellow, which is the best part about painting, you just paint over top. And I'm gonna fix some of those repairs, okay? So this is what happens when we make mistakes. We don't worry about it too much, we don't freak out, we just fix it. Or we make it work. Because it's art, There's no mistakes, right? Whatever you're doing, you just gotta go with it. I'm gonna take some more of that yellow, I'm gonna repair some of those mistakes I made, easy as pie, one there, and another one on this side of my moccasin, right about there. There we go, and there. Clickety-click, it never happened. <laughs> we rinse off our brushes. Now, that is the second part concluded of the painting process, but we have to let this dry. We can't keep going until that part is completely dry. So, what I wanna do now is show you guys a quick video while this paint dries, and while you finish working on your vamp area and your black area, I'm gonna show you a great video of an amazing indigenous beadwork artist named Sharon Cherwiniak, and she did an art show recently of all sorts of beautiful beadwork, including vamps like the ones we're making today, and I gotta show you my trip to that museum gallery to check it out. So check out this video while our paint dries for the next step. Enjoy it, and I'll see you soon. Hey, hey everyone, it's Lance Cardinal. I'm here with the heartbeat of YEG, once again, bringing you all the amazing indigenous events that are happening here in Edmonton, and today is no exception. I am here at the Alberta Craft Gallery here in Edmonton for the opening of Sharon Rose Kootenay's Manitokiwin Sacred Power Made Visible. Oh. 
all of these incredible pieces are made as commentary on what is going on in today's world. It combines culture with politics and really hot issues of today. And I'd recommend coming down to take a look at some of the work. And for example, these two pieces right here, incredible, handcrafted, and you know, the quality of work that comes out of Sharon Rose Kootenai is second to none. You know what else is amazing? This is a solo show. There's nobody else here. It's just Sharon Rose Kootenai and her amazing, beautiful work. And it's always nice to see galleries like the Alberta Craft Gallery celebrating Indigenous people with their own show. Amazing. Hey, hey everyone, welcome back. Wasn't that an amazing art show of beautiful beadwork? Unbelievable. It's so cool to see indigenous artists like the ones we know and love being able to take their beadwork and go to an art gallery and have an entire show of beadwork. It's so amazing. And one day, if you keep doing art and you want to be an artist like I am, you'll be able to have your work in a gallery as well, just like I have. All right, we're going to keep going with our project now to the next step, which is to paint our Alberta rose on our vamp. So first thing we're gonna do is take our smaller brush now and use our yellow and paint the center of our flower. Now we wanna keep our sample close by so you can kinda of see what we're doing. Right in the middle, I'm gonna put the circle. Just like that, easy enough. Don't sweat it too much, not too thick. Always put on less than you think so you don't have to make smeary messes and it's not dripping, okay? Now rinse your brush in between, rinse it to a place where the brush does not show color anymore on your paper towel. It's really important so we don't mix the colors together, all right? Also want to dry off any excess water on your brush. We don't want it to be watery as well. Next we're going to do our pink petals. Now an Alberta rose has five petals, so we're going to do that right now. Five petals around our center. One. Two, three, four, five. Now you can see I kind of just pushed the brush on and made the circles. We don't have to worry about making a circle. Sometimes we can just use the brush and push it down and let the paint do the work for us. Now I put that down there, but do you think it looks done? Not really. Now I can refine it. Take some more paint and push around till it looks how you want it. I want my, my, my flower petals to be a little bit bigger. Just like that. Now remember, you don't have to do pink. <laughs> if you really want to do something different, ask your teacher for a different color. But today we're doing Alberta Rose. Maybe later at home, when you want to do this craft with your mom or dad or cook them or brothers and sisters, you can try this at home with a different kind of flower pattern. Maybe you can copy one that you have at home on one of your moccasins. Be kind of cool. All right, so we finished our pink. We rinse our brush off. And now let's do our leaves. So again, we've rinsed our brush so it's clean. We've dried it off on the paper towel so it's not watery and we're gonna use it now in our little dip cans. Now a leaf, again, don't stress too much. Let the paint do the work for you. Like that and like that and like that. Perfect, doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to look like leaves. And of course, you know, if you're a perfectionist like me, you can go very tiny, minute details, but you know, as long as it looks like a flower like that, I think that looks brilliant. I love how it looks. I'm also gonna add a couple little curly cues on this one. Just like that. You know why? Who cares why? Because I wanted to. <laughs> it's always good to go with the flow, feel it out when you're working with, with your projects because it's your way and it doesn't, it's never wrong. It's your way, right? And there's no mistakes, just like Bob Ross says, only happy accidents. No mistakes in art, okay? 
All right, we are all done our drawing of our flower. I love mine so, so much. Now the next step in this, of course, is gonna be putting on our fur. Like I said before, this is artificial fur that I got from the dollar store, um, but you can also use rabbit fur or uh, fox fur. Maybe you have some scraps in your Cree department they can lend you guys to make this. Now, <laughs> cutting this fur is very, very messy. I don't recommend doing it uh, at the desk while you're working with the paint. Do this ahead of time if you can. Somewhere different, cut it up, uh, and then maybe fold it in half so it's kind of round like this, so you're not gonna make a big mess at your desk, okay? All right, so now, first thing we're gonna do is glue it on. Now, I'm using a glue gun today because I find glue gun just works better for this kind of project. So I'm gonna put a little bit on the middle, front, where I'm gonna put the first attachment. There we go. So exciting. All right, you see that's all done there. I'm gonna take my glue gun and I'm going to put a bead of glue all the way around where that black area is, okay? And then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna move it around and push it into place. Hold it for five seconds. Piak. Nisa, Insta, Niwa, Nianin, and then it's done. Yes, very, very cool. Look at that. Oh my goodness. You know what? And don't worry about getting paint on the fluff. Just let it be because it's hidden under the fluff anyway. So that looks so good now. I have two matching moccasins. You know what? What a coincidence. They look like a matching pair. <laughs> Absolutely love that. That is so cool. Although on the bottom I have a little bit of an error from before. I'm gonna fix that up just like that. Rinse off my brush. And there we go, you guys. Two amazing moccasins on my dirty little fingers. <laughs> but that's okay. Painting is so much fun. A little bit messy, but I know you guys can do it because you're amazing. Grade fives and sixes. This is a hard project and I know you could do it because I didn't give this to anyone else in the school but you. So thank you guys so much for being a part of this fun day today doing paintings. And teachers, please take some pictures, send them to me so I can share some photos next time and show off your work and uh, we can talk about it then. But as always, thank you once again. May the creator watch over you as long as the sun shines, the grass grows, and the river flows. See you guys later. Ha, 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 ha.